Hello, viewers. Today it's wild yeast versus wine yeast. I'll be making pear mockley and I'll be brewing by flashlight. So watch to the end to see that. I have two goals. First, to brew delicious Korean rice wine with some pears. And second, to compare adding no additional yeast, that's using wild yeast only, versus adding wine yeast. We picked some pears, waited for the pears to become softer and sweeter. When they were um, pretty soft, we uh, cut them up, froze them. That will uh, break down the fruit and make it easier to ferment later. So this bag is about 500 grams of pears. So the standard Mockley recipe single stage is one kilogram of rice, one liter of water, and 90 grams Naruk. So for today's recipe, I'm adding 250 grams of pear which is um, mostly water. So I've reduced the water by 200 milliliters and increased the Naruk by 10 grams. So with that compensation, today's recipe looks like this. One kilogram of rice, 800 milliliters of water, 250 grams pear, 100 grams of Naruk, that's per jar, and this is a single stage recipe made with Godabab, hard steamed rice. And I'll put a spoiler right here. This is not going to taste like pear. Um, fermentation process is uh, not going to allow any of the pear taste to survive until the end. All right, so day zero, let's, uh, let's prepare the rice. So two kilograms of rice, one kilogram per jar. Wash this like normal for 15 minutes. Wash it gently. Soak it for uh, three hours at least. Take the pears out of the freezer to thaw. Um, as we're soaking the rice, that'll give it enough time. And then after three hours, drain the rice for 30 minutes. Get the steamer ready. And we're gonna steam for 40 minutes. Yeah, the pears are thawed, and we're going to puree them in the blender. Okay, that did it. So hopefully these pears are nice and fermentable. Lots of sugar in there. Here's my Naruk. This Naruk is pretty chunky, so I'm gonna powder the Naruk. Please break it down a bit. So I'm using 100 grams of Naruk plus 200 milliliters of water per jar. So there might be some natural yeast in the Naruk, and that's all that I'm going to use for, for jar A. But jar B is getting a quarter teaspoon of wine yeast. Jar A is the wild one, and jar B is the wine yeast one. After steaming, spread uh, out the rice to cool to room temperature. And then divide the rice evenly between the two jars. I'm using a scale here to do that. So each jar gets the same amount of rice. And each jar is going to get 250 grams of the pear puree. And then the difference is in the Naruk mixture. Jar A gets the plain Naruk and water, and jar B gets Naruk water plus wine yeast. And 600 milliliters of water for each jar. Mix each of these by hand. That's A and now B. Don't want to waste any rice here. Okay, there's B. Keep the lids loose. And now we're going to ferment these in the basement, which is pretty cool, 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. 
Next morning, let's check it out. Uh, jar A has a sweet aroma and it smells like rice. Jar B has a bread aroma. Jar B is bubbling, but Jar A is silent. So time to panic. Emergency plan is to add some very ripe pear to Jar A. Maybe there will be yeast on those uh, pear slices. Mix that in. Um, and I'm stirring this three times a day for the first two days. Note that Jar B has expanded, but A has not. A has a few bubbles, but still looks wrong. Let's turn this more. Uh, B looks okay. So what can I do? Okay, this still looks wrong. Jar A's fermentation still looks weak. So emergency plan, phase two, jar A goes to the kitchen where it's warmer. Jar B remains in the basement. Now day four, okay, fermentation is, is happening in jar A. You got a really slow start. I'm gonna stir it uh, extra time here to give it a chance to catch up. I'm stirring it again on day five. Give it another chance to catch up. Okay, both are fermenting. Um, they smell different, that's for sure. It's day 10. Day 11 is going to be our bottling day. So that's what I had to do to rescue it. I, I added the pear and I moved it to a warmer location. That's the only thing that got the fermentation going for jar A. Um, it's possible that the wild yeasts, um, the yeast that's in the Naruk or on the pear, Perhaps those yeasts um, don't like the cold temperatures. They would prefer the temperature in the kitchen. So jar A, I get 436 grams of leftover, and I'll bottle this jar A. And the power went out. So this is the part where I'm going to have to get a flashlight and continue bottling. So this is the brewing by flashlight part. Let's try to get that remaining bit in the bottles. And I still have uh, still have jar B as well. Okay, well, position the flashlight and continue on. Okay, so there's there's jar A bottled. Oh, and the power came back on. So just two and a half minutes of power outage. Okay, so here's uh, here's jar B. Like I said, uh, jar A and jar B smell completely oh. differently. We'll get to that soon. Both of them are aren't that hard to uh, strain. So jar B has 460 grams of chigami left over. So in the end, both of them fermented. So that's that's great. Uh, at least I was able to rescue the fermentation through my emergency measures. One day later, let's see how things have settled. Um, looks like A has, is settling less than B. Well, let's give it a taste. Okay, we're gonna mix this up. Since this is fresh, this is gonna be good. As one shoot, all mixed together. There's A looking thicker than B. Let's get right to the tasting. It's time for the taste test. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get these two confused. Jar A has quite a strong sour smell. Um, it, it, I'm not going to get that mixed up with jar B. So jar A is the one that was brewed with wild yeast and jar B used the wine yeast that I normally use. So what I have in my hand is from jar A. It's undiluted. So this is the Wanchu, um, flavored with pear, single stage. Uh, yeah, and it yeah, it has that distinctive 
sour grain smell, like um, like sour rice. Okay, so that, okay. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh yeah, that is sour. Okay, it. I was uh, I was I was worried tasting this that it was gonna taste terrible. Um, it doesn't taste terrible, but it's definitely it's more sour than say apple juice. And that sort of overpowers everything. Um, there has to be some alcohol in here, but it's not, it's not particularly strong. Yeah, so mainly what I get is the real bite of sourness at the beginning and a reasonable fruity taste in the middle. Not a lot of rice and the texture, it's a little powdery at the end. The texture is pretty thick. It's good there's also some sweetness in it to counteract the sourness, but the sourness is more powerful. Okay, that, so that's an interesting flavor. All right, so this is, uh, this is from Jar B. This was brewed, um, Single stage recipe normally uh, with wine yeast and and some pear. Okay, so this is drier. I get more alcohol at the beginning. I can taste the rice. It's not as thick. Yeah, this one is definitely stronger in alcohol. Okay. So uh, I'm glad I got to do this experiment. Um, yeast is such an important part of the brewing process. Um, changing the yeast changes everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.